Leader, I would like to raise an issue with child safeguarding in schools, which I've recently become uh, aware of. As the House will be aware, parents in Ireland have a right to be informed of issues relating to their children and to be consulted on educational matters. Both the Constitution and the Education Act 1998 are clear on the requirement for parents to be kept advised of all relevant issues. However, I've been reliably informed that this is not happening in a serious way, whereby schools are making logistical decisions regarding the children under their care without the knowledge of, or consent of the child's parents. This occurs when a child or children in a school tells their teacher that they are no longer self-identify with their biological sex and wish to be referred by a new name, new pronouns, and to be treated for all extent and purposes as if they were a student who was a member of the opposite sex. As far as I am aware, there is no set national procedure for handling these incidents. There are many resources and guidelines, none of which are independently drafted, but instead are gifted by advocacy groups such as Belong, To and Tenny, and individual schools seem to be left to their own devices when handling this issue. Some will involve the parents and have a sit down so that everyone can make themselves heard and the parents' wishes can be respected. But other schools don't feel the need for this and take it upon themselves to socially transition the students from one gender to the other, sometimes without even informing the child's parents, possibly for fear that they may disagree with and object to this approach. The most serious issues here, however, are the logistical consequences of actively pursuing this social transition access to toilets and changing rooms of the opposite sex, participation in sex-specific SPH classes, and in the case of school trips, accommodation in the sleeping area of the opposite sex, and all the while not telling the parents of the other children impacted that this will be happening. A recent webinar held by the Countess, a new group advocating for women and children, brought this information to parent members of schools and communities, and they were inundated with questions as parents voiced their serious concern with this state of affairs. We must ensure the highest standard of care possible for all children, including the children themselves, who may be experiencing confusion around their identity. After all, anywhere from 63% to 94% of children who experience gender dysphoria will no longer experience such feelings by their late teens. Those children then are not well served by social transition, which is a powerful psychological intervention, placing them on a pathway to puberty blockers and hormone therapy. I recently discovered that if a, a girl is given testosterone for a mere three months, she will experience irreversible facial and hair chest growth for life. A tall price to pay for a decision made in one's teens. So, Leader, I think it's time we had the Minister for Education into this House to explain to us her plan for tackling this most serious issue, which will become <coughs> more commonplace in our schools if left unaddressed, and also in all our sports clubs across this country. Thank you. Um, Senator Kilgan talked about um, child safeguarding in schools and the policies uh, arising from instances that obviously have been brought to your attention. Um, I can only speak about this because when I was Minister for Social Protection, and it's that department for some reason that the gender recognition legislation sits under, not um, health and not the de Department of, of Education. Um, there was a review of the 2015 legislation done, uh, independently commissioned by um, the Minister at the time, uh, who just happened to have been me, and there uh, was a, quite a number of recommendations arising from that review as to how to update the 2015 legislation. Um, but unfortunately, I don't believe anything has happened on that since then. So I might send a letter uh, on our behalf just to ask the Minister what the current status of the recommendations are and when new legislation is going to come um, that will provide safeguarding uh, and, I suppose, guidelines to everybody that deals with children, whether they're schools or sports clubs or hospitals or, you know. Um, so I'll follow up on that for you today.